Superman Wishing I was Lois Lane And how many times have you tried to stop me? God, I just don't know Hello everybody, my name's Brother Neuro and welcome to a bumper pack edition of the Neuroclock News the only news show that guarantees to give you news you don't care about, you never wanted to know, and that we will learn nothing from. It's just like the regular news, except I guarantee you there are no stories involving Trump and Brexit. And I mean it this time. Now, this first story involves two individuals who, thankfully, for the, a long time, I haven't really had to bother mentioning because, thankfully, they've dropped out of fucking you know, relevancy and they were ultimately cancelled by their own buddies on the alt-right. Because, I remember, it's only the left that is, do cancel culture, though. And that is Milo Yiannopoulos and Gavin McG McGuinness. Now... And I recently saw this picture, quite disturbing. Has anyone ever seen Gavin McGuinness without his beard and moustache? I, mean, I mean, is it me or does he look like a character from fucking Bob's Burgers? Right? Now, recently, Gavin McGuinness and Milo were hanging out for each other, which should be an indicator right away as to how fucking far down the pecking order they've sunk when they have to fucking end up calling each other. And they were outside a, rest a restaurant uh, in, in Washington, D.C., you know, one of the tables and chairs outside, and they were just sort of having a having a drink or whatever to chat and talking about how you know, how, you know how you know triggered everyone must have been, and how like and, and they couldn't believe that no one was paying any attention to them or didn't know who the fuck they were. But one person did recognise them, and this woman, uh, you know, this woman came up to him. Now, there's no witnesses to this, other than. Gavin and Milo, no one's, we've only got their word for it, but they recorded a video uh, saying, you know, and apparently a, you know, the way it was reported in The Independent was a woman reportedly poured water over Milo Yiannopoulos and Gavin McGuinness while the fight, far right commenters were sat at a restaurant in Washington, D.C. Now, I would say that we've only got their word for it, there's no other witnesses, but A, I don't know why the fuck anyone else would care why the fuck it happened, but also... I can't imagine Milo and Gavin making up something this fucking lame, right? Um, now, you might be sat there thinking, oh, cough, here we go, because, you know, this is going to bring back very severe, you know, this might, you know, upset some of you on the right, because this is going to bring back bad memories of earlier this year when, you know, there was this milkshaking phenomenon that was sweeping through the nation when, uh, when literally, like, three guys had, like, between them, four or five milkshakes thrown at them over a course of, of of six weeks. I mean, it was a terrifying time to be fucking a, to be alive in this country. It was bordering on fucking civil war. Right? But Nigel Farage, got, and, and you're probably sat there thinking, oh, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to mock them and think that, oh, it's funny, you know, when, we're, you know, when this is all, it's, it's okay to throw things at people and it's like, and you're going to go start going on about how this is tantamount to terrorism. But actually, no, that's not. While, now, whilst all of that is bollocks, and whilst it is still fundamentally hilarious watching Sargon of Akkad, you know, get fucking milkshake four days in a row and get sardines thrown at him, whilst that is still fucking hilarious, I, you know, the fact of the matter is, I'm not bringing this up because I think, you know, it's funny just to throw milkshake, food or drink or anything at people. I'm bringing it up for a completely different reason, because I need to give credit where credit's due. I think it's always important, just so, you know, people can't accuse you of fucking, you know, of always playing favourites, because the second, you know, the first paragraph of this story is is just describing what happened, but it's the second one that I think really hits home. The two men, appearing to laugh off the incident in a video, claimed the woman had been sitting near them for around half an hour and threw water over them as she was leaving, right? Now, laugh off is the fucking key. Milo and Gavin McGuinness got something thrown at them, you know, because of who they were, and they laughed it off. They didn't make out as if they'd just been fucking violated. They didn't contact the police. They didn't demand that the restaurant stop serving water to fucking people. They didn't consider the service of water or anyone advertising water to be tantamount to fucking, you know, terrorism. They didn't get their knickers in a twist and act like a bunch of hysterical big girls' blouses. No, they fucking laughed it off. According to a short video they both uploaded, uh, uh, Gavin McGuinness said, a grumpy feminist just poured drinks on us. 
She said, you should be ashamed of yourself, and then she screamed, kill yourself. Milo Yiannopoulos said, it was only with water, which is so lame. And you know what, Milo? You're fucking right, mate. It is lame. But if anything, getting th water thrown on you is a little bit scarier than getting milkshake thrown at you because water is a clear liquid. It could be anything. If you're going to throw fucking food or drink or anything at these fucking cunts, at least fucking throw it at these because at least they've got a sense of fucking humour about it. Don't get me wrong. I do think you should be ashamed of yourselves and I do love watching your lives fall a fucking part. But, you know, but apart from that, hey, at least you can fucking take it on the chin. Well, Milo definitely can. I mean, Gavin can't, he hasn't got one. Now, if I was to tell you that there is a story in the media that I'm about to address that involves a member of the royal family and the words shock and scandal, then you're probably thinking two words, Prince fucking Andrew. And no, not, not, not Prince Andrew. Trust me, I've got too much material to fucking fit into, the, into this one, so I'm saving that for another fucking occasion. No, this is the headline. It's in the Express, you know, so you know this is going to be objective as a motherfucker. A Prince Philip shock the British tradition that the Duke of Edinburgh cannot stand. Right? Now, this is, this is shock involving Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And then, I'm not joking, the story prattles on with like seven pictures and 18 paragraphs going through, telling us shit we don't need. A, we know the fucking Duke of Piss in Edinburgh is at this fucking stage. right? But then it finally gets to about three quarters of the way down and we get this. According to sources, Prince Philip does not enjoy a classic British tea or any other kind. Instead, he is said to enjoy black coffee. Now, I don't know if the shock here is that Prince Philip doesn't like tea, right? British tea, classic British tea, or the fact that this is the first ever recorded incident of the Prince Philip liking anything that's fucking black in the first place. And they then follow that up by saying, this means he is missing out on some of the massive health benefits derived from drink. He's 90 fucking six fucking bastard years old. Now, you might be wondering, OK, Richard, what is this? What are you bringing this story up for? Well, I'm not bringing it up to make a point about have a go at Prince Philip. I'm beyond that at this point. I'm bringing it up to make more of a point about the Daily Express. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to run down... Uh, I'm going to give you a quick capsule history lesson. And, you know, these are some of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh's most sort of, you know, you know, greatest ever genuine quotes that he has said out loud in front of people over the last 40 years. Hit the music. In 1986, he said to a 21-year-old British student, Simon Kirby, whilst on a visit to China, don't stay here too long or you'll go home all slitty-eyed. In 1993, he said to a British tourist in Budapest, you can't have been here very long, you haven't got a pot belly. In 1998, he asked a British backpacker who had trekked through Papua New Guinea, oh, so you managed not to get eaten then? He asked residents of the Cayman Islands in 1994, aren't most of you lot descended from pirates? In 2002, he asked Aboriginal leader William Brin at the Aboriginal Cultural Park in Queensland, Australia, do you lot still throw spears at each other? In 2002, he said to a wheelchair-bound blind woman called Susan Edwards, who was there with her seeing eye dog, Natalie, do you know they have eating dogs for the anorexic now? He asked another wheelchair-bound nursing home resident in 2002, do people trip over you? He told the Scottish Women's Institute in 1961, British women can't cook. In 1984, on a trip to Kenya, he literally asked a Kenyan woman, you are a woman, aren't you? In 1998, he said, smoke alarms are a damn nuisance. I've got one in my bathroom, and every time I run my bath, the steam sets it off. The person he said that to was a woman who had literally just lost two of her sons in a fire. And that is just 0.001% of, I could do literally an entire YouTube channel dedicated to nothing but going through every fucking stupid thing Prince Philip has said over the last 70 years. But it took him admitting that he's not really interested or a fan of tea for the Daily Express to finally print a story about him saying something shocking. Fair play.
In this month's uh, special on vegan news, which for some bizarre reason seems to be cropping up more and more, I suppose that's a good thing when you think about it, uh, there was this, this story, Papa John's wants, you, wants to pay someone £6,000 to eat its pizza and sides. And they, you know, I know they've not you know, got a great reputation, right? But there's a catch. Yeah, and you know what the catch is? Yeah, apparently the catch is... You know, if you've ever sat and wished you could get paid to eat a takeaway, let's be honest, who hasn't? Uh, well, I haven't. Like, uh, has anyone ever sat down and thought, oh, this is my dream to eat a take? I mean, it might, you, you, you might do it, but you've never dreamt it, have you? Then it's your lucky day, as popular pizza chain Papa John's is on the lookout for someone to test its tasty food. Oh, it does that now, does it? Sounds like a dream job, right? Well, there's only one catch. To be in with a chance of success, you'll need to be vegan. Fucking hell. Well, actually, that's not true, because they then list, you know, the what you actually need, which is you need a food technology back, background, a food science degree, be a self-starter, curious or eager to help Papa John's, and who wouldn't want to help Papa John's, and excellent communication skills. So, you know, probably not, you know, a vegan for very long then, I imagine. Right, so yeah, so yeah, you just need to be vegan and have a science degree and all that other shit, right? right? But in, in other vegan news, there's, you know, one of the more sort of uh, other uh, popular uh, ve be uh, ve vegan fast food uh, you know, new pieces of news which was the Impossible Burger, which you know was the uh, is uh, what Burger King are now calling their new meat-free Whopper. Well, apparently, <coughs> unfortunately, uh, and I saw people giving out a lot of shit about this story, so I'm going to go at the people. Um, a vegan is apparently suing Burger King for cooking the Impossible Whopper on a meat grill. Now. You can call that frivolous if you want, but fuck you, right? Fuck you. Let me put, let me, you know, several years ago, there was a story about KFC that apparently they were trying to, you know, make their chicken, uh, they were trying to inflate their chicken and make it like, not well, inflate it, but I'm trying to make their chicken uh, larger and increase the juiciness of it by injecting it with pork fat, which they thought was a great idea until someone found out, news broke, and the local community of Jews and Muslims sued them. And they won. And if you're a vegan and you're like, and you don't want to eat fucking meat, then it's a you know you keep everything separate on a fucking you know in a kitchen. Fucking sue the bastards, right? And I don't want to give out about KFC because I've you know because this is the you know in in to round off this month's fast food uh, news of which you know for some bizarre reason there's a lot of it. I've got to say that you know this is a story that if you know if KFC are not currently your favorite fast food brand they fucking will be in about two minutes time when this story was pointed and this is one of those stories that you're going to love because it's one of those stories where you you realize you have no you, know, you can't in you know technically justify what happens to this guy but at the same time he's being such a fucking bitch about it that you just you have no sympathy for him right here's the headline dad finds rude message from kfc staff on his gravy pot a dad was left shocked after finding that kfc staff had a laugh at his expense carl francis cooper 38 discovered the word shit face written on the gravy he ordered with his chicken wings Right? And it's it's totally true. Here it is. It's there. You know, there's a picture of the gravy pots. Here's a close up of the. There is they they've blurred it out there. Thank God. From from what I can gather, this was not just some sort of random code or random thing that happened to spell the word shit face. It's not like you know on Countdown where they accidentally spell the word spell the word wanking or something. This was actually they wrote the word shit face on this guy's gravy. And you'd think, you know, now when you see that, now most of us would probably go, oh, we probably wouldn't take it personally because it's just, it's just there. You just think, oh, that's fucking interesting, isn't it? You'd probably even just like, go, oh, Dave, look at that. See the word shit face on my, you know, I, I don't know. But no, this guy had to make a complete fucking song and dance about it. Carl only discovered the word when he returned to his office in Chesterfield, Derbyshire. But he's not happy with the £10 compensation he got as an apology, saying it was a slap in the face. So he got £10 compensation, which is probably more than the chicken wings and gravy cost. So you've got a meal for free and a few extra quid.
He said, I was really shocked to see that random, unpleasant word printed across the top of my sides after waiting so long for my lunch. Even if it wasn't meant for me, and the guys behind the counter were just bored and had meant it for someone else, it's just not on. Now, if, if, you, if, you, if you're entertaining the idea that this wasn't directed personally at you, why would you be so offended by it? Why would you go like, maybe they just put it on there for a laugh and they can't believe they got the biggest fucking girls blouse in Derbyshire to fucking do it. And I wouldn't mind, but there's a picture of this cunt in the paper, right? There's a picture of this cunt. Now, just look at this fucking thing. Now, look at that. Look at that. That is what we say. There's a saying in this country, which is face like a smacked ass, right? And that is a, that is a face like a smacked fucking ass right there. Face like a bulldog licking piss off a nettle. I had nipped out for lunch to the closest branch, minding my own business, and ordered chicken wings. Why did he have to tell us he's minding his own business? It sounds a bit suspicious. Oddly enough, I didn't think of getting sides, then saw the adverts for gravy and thought to myself, that would spice it up. Oh, gravy with your chicken. That would spice it up. God almighty. Have you, this guy hasn't had an erection since the Reagan administration. I waited. Now, this is where it gets suspicious. I waited 20 minutes, maybe even 35 or 40. Now, I'm sorry, right? You know the difference between, you know, you know, when you say 15, 20, one thing, when you say 25, when there's five minutes, 10 at a push, maybe, but a difference of 20 minutes, right? and he's not even sure. I waited 35 or 40 minutes for my lunch, so I was in a bit of a flap by the time my order came. So I had to rush back to work, meaning I didn't see shit face printed on both my gravy pots until I'd sat down ready to eat it. It took me by surprise. I sat there trying to think back on the whole occasion and work out if I'd done something to deserve that. Why? These people work at KFC. How can you be offended by anything these people say? Truthfully, it probably wasn't meant for me. He is so insecure, it's driving me mental. But they should be careful. Lots of kids go to KFC. The staff there really should know better. He wrote a letter to KFC telling them how offended he was and they responded with a £10 voucher. Cole also hit out at people who called him a snowflake online. I bet that's not all they fucking called you. Jesus Christ, you know, you know I, I, find this guy. Find this guy on Twitter or Facebook and send him, a, just send the word shitface. Spam him. That's an order. He said, not only did I have to wait around half an hour. For, oh, it's around half an hour for your food now. I was insulted when I'd done absolutely nothing wrong. But you're not sure, are you, that you didn't do anything wrong? And then they send out a goodwill voucher that's basically what I paid for it. So you got a meal for free, right? Now, I don't know about you, but if KFC were doing an offer where if you go in and order a meal, if your meal is less than £10, you can get it for free if you let every single member of staff you know, walk up to you and personally abuse you. Even spit in your face. I'd take that. Fucking yes, please. 14 piece party, party bucket. Thank you very much. I know it means I'm getting a free lunch, but it's not on. They should take this more seriously than it seems they are. And it, to their credit, they are not taking it seriously. right? <clears throat> because this is what a KFC spokesman said when asked about it. The colonel would have blown his lid at this. Looks like a team member was trying to be funny, but it's not on. We're speaking to Carl to make it up to him. What does he want? They've apologised, giving you the meal for free. You're in the national newspaper looking like an absolute pillock. What more do you want? Fuck this guy. Now, in direct contrast to that last story, in which case the victim deserves no sympathy whatsoever, this is one of those stories where you're, you're going to laugh, but you're going to feel really bad about it. Because it's... I, I have... I don't know. This just... What happened? Why this is happening? But just... You know, just feel prepare to feel very guilty. Homeless man threw huge bucket of hot diarrhea all over woman's face. Just gonna leave that one 
out there, let you soak up, for want of a better term, that image. Homeless man threw huge bucket of hot diarrhea all over woman's face. Let's go into some detail, shall we? A homeless man threw a huge bucket of hot diarrhea over an unsuspecting woman's face in stomach churning random attack. I hope she was unsuspecting. I don't want to know what fucking, you know, you know, how anyone could get to a point in their life where they're walking around, you know, just waiting for it. Oh God, you know, in this day and age, you just don't know. Heidi Van Tassel was about to drive home from a Thai meal with friends near the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Los Angeles in April. Now, this is how long it's taken. This is November. This happened in April. And they're only just reporting it. Do you know why? Because it took this long for the journalists to stop fucking pissing themselves with laughter. When the attacker, named Jerry Blessing, struck. She has now spoken out about the attack saying, it was diarrhoea, hot liquid, I was soaked, it was coming off my eyelashes and into my eyes. Oh, can you imagine? God, some of it must have gone in her mouth. But just to feel bad, if you're fucking chuckling to yourself, don't feel bad, because, you know, even the medical professionals who turned up to fucking take care of her didn't seem to fucking, you know, didn't seem to be able to hold back the joy they were feeling in their soul. Paramedics who came to treat me said there was so much of it on me that it looked like the man had been saving it up for a month. Well, there's bedside fucking manner for you, innit? And if this is true, this begs the question. Was he saving it up for a month? Was this just a massive big squirt that he fucking had? Was he collecting it from there? Did he go around collecting it in a... And if he did, where did he keep the bucket? Did he keep it nearby? And how did he keep it hot? How did he keep it hot for if it was a month's worth of poo? And then you think about it and you think, it probably wasn't hot, was it? If someone chucked hot water in your face, you'd be like, yeah, you'd be, you know, you'd be scolded from it. This wasn't hot. It was just warm, right? Now, I know, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that that this, that, I'm not trying to undermine the fucking horrificness of this fucking act. You know, it's bad either way. You know, the temperature of the man's poo does not make this story any more, or the incident any more fucking palatable. I mean, next time, he should, he should chill it. Try and get it really cold. That would freak him out even more. She goes on. It was all inside my car because there was so much of it. Fuck your car, love. He's got it in your eyes. It's in your eyes. She then says, it's something I won't ever forget. It's disgusting. Well, obviously, I would hope you don't fucking forget it. I do not want to fucking know what horrors or what manner of what hideous accident or severe brain damage you're going to need to go through so that at some point in the future, someone's going to go, oh, gee, God, that's stupid. Oh, God, it's like that time that tramp threw all that fucking... That huge bucket of hot diarrhoea over you. And you go, what? When did that happen? And you go, 2019, don't you remember? April, we went out for time here and this homeless man with a bucket of months worth, 14 cubic hectares of poo came out and fucking threw it. It was in your eye. Oh, God, I've forgotten all about that. I don't think so. She then goes on, there needs to be some kind of help for the victim of these crimes. I, I mean... I, I understand that this is a traumatic experience, right? But at the same time, you can't set up a special crime investigation department. You can't set up a special police unit specifically dealing with the victims of people who have a fucking a, 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 a hobo a, a hobo's fucking poo thrown at them. I will never ever forget his face. You'll never forget the shit that came out of his arsehole, love. Jerry Blessings was charged with battery over the attack. Yeah, battering her, you know, in, po in fucking shite. And taken to jail before being freed on bail. What was the bail? On the Who thought this was a good... What, he's empty now, isn't it? He's safe for at least another month. He's homeless, he can't eat that fucking much. Anyway... So there's that. Now, you would think that the, like, search for news would end there. I mean, hot, Tramp throws hot 
bucket of huge bucket of hot diarrhea over woman's face. You think that would be the end. But I, I somehow just carried on looking and I ended up on this website called Nine Honey dot com it, it, dot com and this is one of these fucking oh my god i'm going to be careful here because i'm going to get people accusing me of victim blood but this is this is like you know this is one of these websites where it says we are australia's leading women's lifestyle network pride ourselves on being non-judgmental a place women can come for for some me time <clears throat> with other people right okay uh, but it's and it's one of these sort of like it, it it paints itself as one of these like sort of vanilla like women's issues thing but it's so fucking like it try it's it's so vanilla to the point where it's almost patronizing right and it's like it's like stories like you know you know is it it's, it's stories like has equality ruined chivalry like what do you do if you have baby name regret? Who literally gives us... Is that even a thing? Has swearing become socially acceptable? What do you do when you don't like your friend's child? Is online dating killing old-fashioned ways of meeting people? <clears throat> what the fucking hell? I mean, is this honesty? But this one, this is the, the headline. Now, like I said, just bear with me here. Because I, I, I refuse to believe, right... There is any woman out there reading this. If you're like maybe, if you're like under the age of fourteen, you might not have worked worked this out. But th but this is just this is the article I found. The underhanded way my colleague convinced me to sleep with him. Now right, this is written from just the woman's point of view. We've got no other corroborative, uh, and it's a perfectly believable story. But what I'm amazed at is that I'm supposed to fucking somehow, like, 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 A, how this woman did not figure this out, and I'm supposed to fucking somehow, and <clears throat> let me get into it, right? I was instantly attracted to my work colleague, Jason, even though I knew he had a girlfriend. Right, well, that's okay. You're allowed to be attracted to people, even if they've got a partner. All the girls at work thought he was gorgeous. And a common thing to hear was, I wish he was single. I heard, I'd heard his relationship with his girlfriend was very stormy. They were always having major fights, breaking up, then getting back together again. Make up sex. Angry. Fucking shove your head in a fucking pillow and fucking give him a slack. You know, he used to flirt with me quite a lot. Because I knew he wasn't single, I never really flirted back. I never really flirted back, which is probably what he liked about me. Yeah, OK. I just I want to know, what do you mean, really? OK. Jason was one of those extremely good looking guys who probably has never had to chase a girl in his life as women just fall all over him. So the fact I didn't give him any signs I was keen on him, well, apart from the fact you sort of maybe flirted back, was likely the main reason he started to chase me. He started out by writing me the occasional email, telling me I looked hot. Then I started flirting back with him. Right, so you've already lost the moral high ground there. You're flirting back with him. And eventually he asked me to meet him after work for a drink. So <clears throat> it took him a couple of emails before you stopped letting him chase you, right? This is hardly, this isn't exactly playing hard to get, is it? Right. I replied, I'd better not. You've got a girlfriend. And he told me they'd broken up. That was music to my ears. But when I mentioned it to one of my other workmates, she said, they'll get back together in a week or less. So one of your other work colleagues. So one of the people who clearly, you know, knows more about this than you. Someone, someone who this guy, Jason, has probably knobbed himself. That's when he really put the hard word on me, mm -hmm. right? saying he was crazy about me and wanted to spend the night with me. Really, he just went straight to spend the night. Just spend the night, right? A couple of emails. Do you want to go for a drink? Do you want to stay over? I mentioned his girlfriend again, but he kept saying the relationship was over for good this time. Now, it's this next sentence where this woman really... 
Like, you know, just... I didn't have any reason not to believe him. No, other than his entire track record and common sense. But I kept remembering what my friend had told me. That they, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So, like, you know, this is, it's almost like this is a pattern of behaviour. Like, he breaks up with his girlfriend, they split up for a week, they probably bugger off and knob someone else, then they get back together again. He's probably ploughed his way through half that fucking office. What if he was just using me for sex or attention while his girlfriend was angry with him? No! How could that possibly... That makes literally no sense. I agreed to go back to his place where we kissed for a while. Right, now you've completely... Right... And you're completely and utterly at this cunt's mercy now. Right? When he tried to get me into his bedroom, when you say get me into, it sounds like he's dragging you. Right? Any man who is desperate to seal the deal, like above all else, right? Yes, he's using you for sex, right? I stopped telling him I was worried about being dumped for his girlfriend. That sentence, being dumped for his girlfriend, if they got back together again. That's when Jason got very persuasive and actually bribed me. Yeah, he didn't lie to her. He bribed, well, he lied to her and bribed her. He told me if I stayed the night with him, he promised he'd end his relationship with his on-off girlfriend for good. And uh, so... He will end his relationship for good, meaning it isn't over for good yet, but you've got to shag him first. And alarm bells didn't start ringing at this stage, did they? And, you know, and just focus on you, meaning he hasn't fully been focused on you. Right? If he was, if he was interested in focusing on you, you could have said, well, no, why don't you break up with your girlfriend first, end it, right? and then... I'll sleep with you. Why would you trust it if he's... For fuck's... But he's a... But, and if you've got any... Before anyone accuses me of victim blaming here or, you know... Or, 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 you know let just, this is next bit. He also promised me he'd talk to our boss recommending me for a promotion. I knew he and the boss were good mates, so that sounded good to me. So, not defending what Jason's doing here... But what you've just done is show if you you've just told the world that you would quite happily shag some geezer if it meant you got a promotion. If it meant you would put and you could you would get a promotion at what you would be you know be, you know more pay, better position, you would be given a better a, a more prominent role at work if you shag this guy. I don't what reason have I got now? To fucking you know, view you with any fucking more trust. This is like it's like a paedophile babysitter turning up in a van in a bloodstained clown outfit. He couldn't be more fucking obvious. I believe Jason and spent the night with him. Now, who wants to guess what happened the next day? He didn't reply to any of my text afterwards, and when we were at work on the following Monday, he barely acknowledged my existence. And yes, I had word that he'd gotten back together with his girlfriend. Oh my God, if only there was some sign that this was going to happen. Like literally everything that happened leading up to it. And I'm like, people, like, th this is just, I'm sorry, you, you cannot piggyback on the fucking, this is like a valuable life lesson you've learned here. Don't trust men. But you cannot piggyback this on the underhanded way if you shagged him and got a promotion, could there be another article written by one of your colleagues by the underhanded way some slapper I work with got a management role two weeks after fucking getting employed? You see, if that last article was just, you know, doing nothing to progress, you know, the women, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, the feminist movement, this next article is going to set it back several hundred years. I'm just going to plaster it. Now, it, I will give it credit for this, and it's the only thing I'm going to give it credit for. And if you if you thought the, the, the huge bucket of diarrhea story was disgusting and you're eating your lunch, I would fucking, you know, pause this video, watch it fucking later. Right, uh, they've got a good pun in the title, uh, but it, it begins and ends there. And I'm just going to leave this one out there again. 
Absolutely. Five uses for your period blood every month. Every month. Now, this is one of those car crash incidents. This is one of those Serbian film kind of articles where you're like, <clears throat> do I want to read? I don't want to. I want to, but I don't want to. I, I'm going to look. I'm not going to look. I don't want to look, but I'm going to. And you think that's bad? You think that's bad enough? But let me just read this one. We'll take this one and we'll get through it together, right? We will, you know, we'll just hold our hands, have some chocolate, stick a hot water bottle down your front. Period blood is a highly dynamic and powerful substance. Is it dynamic? I don't know what a dynamic sub, but powerful. Mystically speaking, and they've lost me. The main thing period blood represents is the idea of the cycle. Something that grows, holds, releases and rests like the seasons of the year. The, what the fucking hell are you talking about? Do you know what? Soda's having a shit. With that in mind, the period is just as much a symbol of life generation as it is a symbol of death and the underworld. I would respond... If this, this is beneath refutation, isn't it? However, when searching the internet for resources about menstrual blood, it is easy to encounter ideas like our bodies, the divine feminine, and Mother Earth. Yeah, fucking weirdos. Everybody needs to reconnect with the cycles of the moon and the earth. Can I, can't I do that by literally... Living on Earth. I mean, am I not connected with the cycle of the moon and the Earth? I'm as near to the moon as you are. And I live on planet Earth. Which I assume is where you're from. Many people use menstrual cups to collect... The There's a cup you can buy just for that? There's a gap in the market I never saw on Shark Tank. Menstrual cups... Oh, here's a set. There's a fucking stocking filler for you. However, you can always squeeze the blood out of your tampons or use freshly removed tampons as applicators for suggestion number one. I hope we're taking notes at home before you rush onto Amazon and typing in menstrual cups. Do you... Where do you clean them thing? Do you fucking... Imagine being... Imagine going home. Imagine being a geezer who's married to this fucking insane bitch. He just goes home and put, opens the dishwasher. There's a minstrel cup sat on a fucking rack. It isn't mixed with artificial smells or chemicals. Oh, yes. Well, I like my period blood au naturel. And pouring blood into a jar is generally a more aesthetic experience than squeezing out a tampon. Is it really? Well, call me a traditionalist. These are literally words a human being has written. Now, in case you can't work this out for yourself, they then go in, they then give you some instructions of how to do it. To collect, bring a jar with you to the toilet. Oh, you're going to at least go to the toilet. That's nice. And when you have removed the cup from inside your body, pour the contents of it into the jar. I'm, I'm pretty sure this could be figured out on your own. If this is the kind of thing you feel the need to fucking do with your, with your free time... I could, I could work this out. Always store your period blood in the fridge. Yes, make sure it's got a fucking date label on it. Also, use it quickly. Some smell is not a big deal. It basically comes with the package. Mm -hmm. But given how period blood isn't exactly a rare substance, no need to save it for later. Yeah, don't be hoarding. Obviously, period blood is an excellent fertiliser because it is the original fertiliser. Oh, my God, can you imagine? You go around someone's house, oh, we grow our own vegetables. Oh, really? What fertiliser do you use? Oh, really? <laughs> and I don't care if someone says I'm being I'm sexist or mansplaining. This is fucking nuts. Now, on to the five uses. Number one is, and I say five, I get the impression they were... You know, stretching it, really. I get the impression they had one, but they thought everyone loves a list. So they forced themselves to try and come up with five. Because the first one is the really only, how can I put this, practical and, net, and you know, one that you can imagine might do. 
and it is exactly what you're thinking it is. Do a face mask. And no, if you think that I'm pissing around, this is the photograph that accompanies this article. Oh yeah, that could be someone's mother, someone's sister, someone's daughter, and they've got to explain this shit. I get the impression this is more of a sort of crazy auntie kind of website though. But yes, do a face mask. Right. Now, in case you can't work it out, again, they give you a, a handy li what, you know, list of instructions here. Prep by cleaning your face. Yes, the last thing you want to do is have any grime, grit or dried sweat on your face when you're about to rub it in period blood. And wearing either nothing or a T-shirt you don't mind getting dirty. Yeah, your old period blood T-shirt. Maybe get some coveralls. Or maybe, I don't know, a fucking straight jacket. The fresher the blood, the better. Yeah, literally, if you could just somehow attach a sort of like, one of those like, you know, spray, just attach, stuff a tube up there and just go straight on. You know, a sprinkler system. You know when you're siphoning off petrol, if you could just get it up there and just, you know, it dries even quicker than a clay mask. But you can leave it on for about 15, 20 minutes or as long as it feels right. There is no point. There is no amount of time that could pass that could that I could start getting used to that. And it, it dries quicker than a clay mask. How fucking much quicker? How busy are you that you need... One of the only way you can save fucking time is with a is by transferring from a regular clay or mud face mask to period blood. The effect is cooling. The mask can smooth your skin, treat acne, and many people swear over its youthful effect. I bet they do. I said they say, "What the bloody hell is this?" It's safe to use someone else's blood for this mask. Oh, thank God! If you're in a stretch. Someone threw yours out. But make sure you check in about common vaginal ailments and vaginal... I think so, yes. I would kind of hope that someone who I know... If I'm intimate and friends with someone, close enough to the point where I feel comfortable asking if they can spot me a bit of period blood for a face mask, I would kind of fucking hope that they would be considerate enough to tell me... Oh, by the way... Got a bit of extra cheese on the taco at the moment. Might want to fucking pass it up. The last thing you want is gonorrhea on your fucking forehead. And this final part. It's astounding how trolls have shamed people on YouTube and across the internet. It is not in the least bit astounding. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I realise that's kind of hypocritical because that's kind of what I'm doing now. It is not. These are not trolls. It is not astounding for someone to react with with arse opening fuck openingly fucking you know vomit inducing fucking horror at the shot of a young woman with fucking ringing a fucking tampax eye over her fucking that's, that, that's not astounding it's not shame it's like oh you fucking skanky cow this may also occur in real life just a word of advice. Keep this one to yourself. Let it be your little thing. Don't share it. This is going to... Otherwise, there will be some conversation around the water cooler. But hey, don't worry if you do feel shame. You know, or you do feel that you've been shamed by trolls or even this video. Because, number two, believe it or not, period blood can even help you with that. As we learn in number two. Do a ritual to heal shame. Periods aren't easy. From physical pain to logistical annoyance, nobody relishes the ordeal that is a period. To make matters worse, people who bleed have been shamed and reviled for thousands of years. Not people who bleed, right? Yes, I realise that, you know, periods have been you know, a long time, you know, for thousands of years. It doesn't really happen now, but it's not people who bleed. Everybody bleeds. But nobody bleeds. You know, if I had piles, right, and I wipe my arse and there's blood on the paper, I wouldn't go, oh, that might clear up my acne. It's called dirty. It should be hidden away, right? And you're, you're not helping, right? 
We whisper the words tampon to each other in public restrooms. In public restrooms, presumably public restrooms in which you're in there with other women. So what, women shame other women for having fucking... T is that what... I didn't know that. What, why would you do that? We whisper tampon. What are you supposed to go, hey, Janet? Do you know what? If men had fucking periods, we wouldn't have discreet whispering tap. We'd be like, no, we'd have a fucking golf bag that said my fucking tampons written on the side. We'd have hammocks made out of sheepskin. Shame hurts. It permeates many aspects of our life and can hugely affect our mental health. That's why it's important to make space in your life to handle shame. What better representation of shame than period blood? Literally anything. Have a one night stand with a geezer who's fucking who you who, who you shagged when you were so drunk you don't even know what race he is when you wake up in the morning, right? Get off with your cousin. Any, there's so many things you can do that can represent shame beyond this. Each month, collect some of your period blood and put it in a ritual container that you place before you. Light a candle and add anything to this altar that you feel called for. What, you need more? Then take some of the blood, put it in your hands, play with it, feel it, smell it, make friends with it. This is the kind of, this sounds, this is describing the kind of pornography that I accidentally click on. Take more if you like, be with it, whisper words to your chosen or familial, familial ancestors. Yeah, not the ones who are alive, right? Give gratitude to the lineages that have brought you here today. Then to uh, genetic, oh, this is getting a bit fucking. Right, then take the container of blood and gaze into it. Meditate with you. this woman. This would make sense. <coughs> the words I'm reading, they would make sense if I was reading them off of a padded cell wall written in human shit. Which probably she wrote this article in that. Because that's probably good for the fucking. It's probably good for rising damp. Want more blood magic? No! The most comprehensive list of ways to incorporate period blood into magical practice is... And there's a link. I didn't click on it. Uh, call me narrow-minded. I've made my mind up. Now, the next one is at least something that is practical. That you can actually do. Right? But it's really... Not that... It's, it's really at this point you sense they're stretching. Make nail polish! This totally untested recipe... This is very important, the word she uses in this part here. This totally untested recipe could be fun to try. OK, if you haven't tried something, but you think... OK, painting your nails with period blood is not something that you look at and go, that looks like fun, I might recommend that. Never done it, but it seems like... No, bungee jumping, right? Skateboarding. These are things... This totally untested recipe could be fun if you fun to try if you are the sexy combination of crafty into makeup and a daredevil. And single in your late 50s and literally bored out of your fucking minge. Shop for a nail lacquer base on a website like this. Didn't click on it. I don't want to know. I don't even want to fucking begin to think what she would use for nail lacquer. What's wrong with good old-fashioned fanny batter? Good to have a little funnel, some silver mixing balls, and, and a clean nail polish container as well, in case you want to market it on Etsy. If I were to try this, she hasn't even tried this. She's making this shit up. No one has ever done this. If I were to re try this, which for the record I have not, this woman is too... Fu she couldn't be... The, the face mask... That's all right. The ritual to heal shame, which literally involves you rubbing it all over yourself whilst looking at pictures of your fucking the, the shame in your dead grandmother's eyes. But she wouldn't she hasn't even she couldn't be bothered with the nail polish. I would first strain strain some first or second day ruby red and bloody type period blood. Y yes, let's divide this up. 50 shades of period blood. Thereby removing any chunks. <laughs> Go, and then she says, go bury the chunks under a bush. Why not? It came from under a bush. Bury it under another. Now, I know that chemistry is a big part of this process. Oh, fucking Walter White here. And I don't know how organic matter reacts to lacquer. Have you, 
ever considered doing some, like, fucking research, or just not writing anything, or just maybe not oversharing. This website should be called TMI. However, if the result I got was unsatisfactory, I would probably add a little nail polish remover to the mix. The cheap and easy version, it, 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 you could even add glitter. Why not? Put some glitter, why not? While you're fucking at it. Add anything, to, put, you put anything you're pissing want in there. Add some PVA glue, sod it, turn it into a slime, fuck it. Chuck in some metal filings and put a magnet round it. Fucking fill your boots up. Hygienically speaking, hygienically speaking, I feel intuitively, you do not feel anything intuitively, particularly on the issue of hygiene and certainly not when it comes to speaking. And if you want, if you're still not convinced that they aren't out of ideas, number four, paint with it, which is literally... Just number three, but you're now extending it to painting just your nails to literally fucking everything. Another great way to use your blood is to make paintings with it, okay? Another great way. Take some blood, take a big piece of... I've got Sharpies, darling. How desperate for a pen? The Marquis de Sade had to be fucking literally, you know... <coughs> He had to literally be stripped naked and be robbed of all of his clothing before he fucking resorted to using his own blood. And he wrote sallow. Take a big piece of paper, take a paintbrush or your fingers, yet finger painting, and do what your heart compels you. I tell you what, just take those fingers, stick them down your throat and be sick, and then use your vomit to fucking just puke that up the wall. You can paint with your eyes closed. This is not fucking useful. Yes, you can paint with your eyes closed. You can do fucking anything with your eyes closed. You could cross the street with your eyes closed. Try that sometime. Online mindfulness and meditation guru. Mindfulness and meditation guru. Teal Swan has a great overview of reclaiming one's period. What do you mean reclaiming your period? No one took it off you. We didn't give it to you. We didn't take it off you. No one wants it. No one asked for it. We've just, we have moved on. We accept it happens. You don't need to reclaim this. This isn't the N word, okay? This was fucking done to you by nature and or God. And the last one, just to put the cherry, the blood red cherry on top of the, just to put the cherry shaped lump from under the bush. This is number five. Amplify your dreams. You know what? After reading this article, I don't have any dreams. I have no hopes. I have no joy. I have nothing in me. I am officially fucking dead inside. I wish I was gay. Before bed, place a dot of period blood onto your third eye. Because third eyes exist, that's taken. As you fall asleep, call in dreams and visions that you need to see right now. When you wake up, be sure to write down what you saw in your dream journal. Do this for a few nights in a row. Couldn't you just become a Christian and pray, love? All, right, all you've got to do is get on your hands and knees, put your hands there, please, God. It's the same fucking thing. I mean, even the, I mean, even the fucking, you know, even the... The Christians, they at least fucking, you know, recognise that blood is disgusting and therefore they, they say, let's use wine instead. Do that! Working with our dreams is really important because they offer shimmering glimpses of our subconscious. If you're conscious, if this is what you think of consciously, I don't want to know what the fuck dwells below. I'm done at this point. I'm leaving it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like, post a comment below. If you enjoy, my, enjoy the stuff I do on YouTube, as well, you know, please understand you can support me by going to Patreon or making a donation via PayPal. This is what I do. This is my main source of income. So any support I can get from you is greatly appreciated more than most. I just need to stay. I need a roof over my head and for you. That's all I want. Right. And if you like, if you like the artwork I do behind me, I do take commissions on that. If you want to fucking want some of that action. 
Um, I, sw I don't do period blood drawings. It's just, just marker pens. I'm old school. But other than that, this has been the Neuro Clock. I don't even know if it's news. I don't know how I'm going to top this. I don't want to read the article that could. But my name's Dick Coughlin, a.k.a. Brother Neuro. Good night, may God be less. And remember, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Superman